Recently, I saw the name Kume Satu pop up a lot in my comment section. I decided to check his work and turns out he's the author of Mistake of Pythagoras and co-author of Sweet Half-Life and Pieces Like Us. I don't know if he worked on anything else or if he's still making mods for Half-Life games. Last time he was online on ModDB was almost 10 years ago and most of his publishing there is from 2005 and 2006. Mistake of Pythagoras seems like a very ominous title to me. I delved deep into it, but the truth was, the mod delved deep into my mind. The mod is not good, it's not bad, it's amazing, and it's terrible. Playing this mod was one hell of an experience and I hope I'm able to convey to you what this mod did to me. A side note, all the music in this video is taken from the mod's own soundtrack. The mod's title screen is abstract, and this abstractness of it stays throughout the whole experience. Abstract, surreal, and strange. That's how I would describe it. This mod came out in December of 2005. It has about 3 chapters, 10 maps, so let's get into it. It starts off fairly simple, fairly normal. A concrete number falls from the sky. Yeah, it's all normal. So the story of this mod is that it takes place in an alternate universe. Gordon is in City 17 and some quote unquote mistake happens. Weird stuff starts to happen and it's our job to fix it all. We start off from the apartment and talk with Kleiner on the computer. I like how Satu spliced together Half-Life 2 lines to make the dialogues for this mod. So more numbers start falling from the sky for some reason and we need to go outside to check it out. The mapping in this mod is fairly basic and simple, at the start at least. And for a mod from 2005 when Half-Life 2 was just one year old, I wasn't expecting much when I was playing this. This rendition of City 17 feels like some American suburb, but the texture use is done well actually. So all over the streets we see that these concrete numbers fell from the sky and the cops are investigating it. We make our way down this tunnel and press on. We end up at a checkpoint and out of nowhere, a generator falls and starts flying into the air. A portal opens up and more numbers fall down. <sighs> right. Then this alien spaceship, something out of a 1930s sci-fi movie, starts flying around and transparent man hacks start chopping us up. This is supposed to be an invasion scene. Randomly in some box, we find our AGV suit and right next to it is the pistol and crowbar. What I kinda liked in this mod is that the Combine aren't really your enemy but rather your allies. So the flying metal basket tears up a strider and carries on with its invasion activities. We find ourselves at a water gate and turn a valve to what I assumed opened the gate. But no, it opens up this drain. Also there's this thing too. And flying boomerangs? One thing that I notice is that the mod loves to spam enemies. There's a point where a combat section is challenging and after that it's just irritating and boring. So if you spam three dozen zombies or head crabs, it's not a challenge, it's just absurd. So this metro cop hands us an SMG which is pretty cool. We head into the combine building and meet some familiar characters. There's Kleiner, there's Breen on the monitor, after that we meet Alex, Barney and Mossman. It's kinda cool seeing all these characters together in a completely different scenario working together. Then we head into the teleporter and here is where the madness begins. I'm not gonna say anything and I want you to see the mood and vibe of this chapter's introduction. The classical fancy ass music, the strange stone and marble texture usage and giant metal baskets and boomerangs in the sky, it all just works. I honestly love how weird and abstract this all looks, how weirdly comforting and out of place this is. This strange synergy starts from here and keeps you on your guard throughout the rest of the mod. 
So inside this structure, there's a pressure plate we have to activate so we can head outside and turn on the power for the computer we saw on the top floor. Then we come across an enemy of antlions and an antlion guard. And the enemy spam. Oh boy, the enemy spam. Even with my low tier video game journalist skills, this still feels a bit too much. So what I did is, I grabbed the SMG ammo, funneled them into the stairs, then they were easy pickings. Then we do something and a portal opens up outside. Barney and a bunch of elites show up, we kill the ant lion guard and that's pretty much it. Then more numbers fall from a portal, and a gigantic ship starts coming out of it and... <sighs> what even is this mod? So the ship starts to teleport us and we end up at another weird yet comforting place. Then a ghostly metro cop shows up and the assault on this place begins. And I absolutely love how mismatched the music is for this combat section. We'll have to shut it down from inside. Come on, Gordon. <laughs> This mod is really out there, man. Barney throws in a ball, and that opens the door. Now the insides of this place made me remember old, late 90s renders of strange places. Maybe it's the off-white colored interior or the warm lighting coming in from the outside. The empty rooms that are barely decorated also add to the effect. On the top floor, there are these strange floating bombs. I have no clue how they work or what's their proximity. I just get close to them, they activate and blow up. After that, there's 12. I shit you not. 12 man hacks. There's uh, uh, uh. Then the teleporter room opens up and now we're going somewhere? So one thing I haven't talked about is the story. Here's the thing, there is no story. I mean, apart from the premise written on the mods mod DB page, there's no exposition. None at all throughout this whole mod. You'll just be saying, wait, what? throughout this whole thing. So we land next to the number 8. Uh, uh. And we get ready for the worst type of enemy you've ever seen. Invisible enemies, invisible shotgunners, invisible machine gunners, god damn it Kome Satu! Why would you add an invisible enemy type on top of a level that takes place at night? That's it, I'm calling the cops! You have to be really, really careful here. If you get attacked and have no cover, you're pretty much fucked. And now we can see the enemies? Partially at least? I don't know. Thankfully we get back up in the form of a gunship which takes care of the stragglers left around this weird building. After that the door on the front is locked and our friend Strider McLonglegs blasts it open with his long nose gun. Inside I had no clue what to do. There was a giant hole in the middle but I couldn't figure out how to activate the pulley which would lower me into the underground area. So, I, uh, I, uh, no clipped, sorry. The underground area starts off well, but one side of it is all twisted. You kill a bunch of fast zombies and then the wall cracks open to reveal a portal. This portal leads us to this abstract looking place with lit floors and stone walls. And apparently this cube from Super Mario 64, I guess? It's not really a puzzle, but you need to take this piece and stick it inside the other slot. Once you do that, a zero pops up out of the floor and the force field vanishes. You get on the zero and start floating upwards. I never knew I would have to type this in a script, Jesus fucking Christ. So the floating zero falls and we fall too, but we don't take any damage. A floating tube destroys another tube and... but... Then we get attacked by an army of fast headcrabs. I cleared this part and I thought this must be it, but nope. There's so many headcrabs. I've been meaning to talk about the other things about this mod, but what's happening on screen just doesn't let me. I mean, look at this. Anyway, as you can tell by now, the only sane part of this mod is the introduction to it, right up until the floating bucket appears. Do I like this mod? Do I hate it? I mean saying either isn't relevant at this stage. The only reason I'm covering this mod is because it's part of Half-Life 2's history. It's one of the oldest mods for the game. And the second reason is that many people recommended me this mod. Does it have flaws in its gameplay design? Yes, plenty. But do I like it? 
Absolutely. What does that mean? I have no clue. There's a strange energy surrounding this mod and I can't describe it in words. It's delightful yet obscene. But at the end of the day, I loved going through this and at the same time despised what it had to offer. Especially this section up next. So after we take a look at the floating metro cop mask, we head our way to this maze-like area. It has a trippy skybox with planets and stars visible and the orange light surrounding the area just felt so nice. But then it happened. Fucking head crabs. The checkerboard texture was already making my head spin and seeing these little bastards on there made it worse. They kept on spawning and spawning and oh god look at this. What the hell is this? Why is this? There was a door at the end and that wouldn't open and these fucking head crabs kept biting me in the ass like, come on. Ah! Dear Kume-chan, I played your mod called Mistake of Pythagoras. I would like to know, what drugs did you take when you made this mod? Love you. Also, I really, really hate you. Yours truly, Hazard Chan. So, I did what I had to do. I no-clipped. So then the metal basket arrived and I started shooting it, thinking this was the final boss. But there was no feedback from all the shots I was hitting him with. I had no clue what was happening, but the basket wasn't attacking me, oh no. It was doing something much, much worse. It was spawning more head crabs, poisonous ones at that. I killed so many of these, I hit the basket with everything I had, but nothing. Then I loaded up the next map, and now I was in another fever dreaming looking place. These three metro cops kept on spawning whenever I killed them, but there was a barrier in the middle and no matter what I did, I couldn't get to the other side. I couldn't open up the gate, where's the button for this gate? Do I need to hit a switch? Do I need to take out a wire? Where is it? In the finale, we have this strange magnetic force around us and one or two bullets was all it took to kill the enemies now. If I got near anything or anyone, it got launched into the air or exploded. At this point, I was so frustrated, I just kept using god mode and noclip because I wanted to see what the end looked like. I could have abandoned this video, but this mod made me curious enough to find out what the ending is like. But. It didn't work out like that. In the final boss arena, I kept getting pushed back and this triangle thing kept spawning 10 mana hacks and then this hint came up and I had to look in the configuration but there was no binding option for this. How the hell was I supposed to do the binding? I kept killing the man hacks but it didn't do anything. They just came back and they 